Okay, please give me a moment. It's just starting. Okay, so the record has started. Let's uh, pray together and let's continue. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Father, we thank you for your help, Lord, throughout this journey of studying the the book of John and the epistles of John. Father, whatever we have learned, we pray that, Lord, it will deeply impact our lives. And Father, even as Apostle John wrote, uh, Father, about um, the Lord Jesus, so that we may know God better. I pray, Lord, that uh, everything that we have learned, that it will be more than just knowing, uh, Lord, the, the story as such, Father, but, Lord, it will be um, a revelation to us, Lord, strengthening us and, Lord, giving us the wisdom to speak into other people's lives as well. Father, thank you once again. Thank you for the technology, Lord, that uh, this semester you have made it possible, Lord, to uh, share your word. Thank you for every student, Lord. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for the call of God on their lives. Continue to equip them, prepare them, Father. And Lord, I pray that they will be, uh, Lord, thoroughly uh, trained, Father, even as uh, you release them into the work that you have for them. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, in the last class, we completed uh, John chapter 7, which was about the prayers of Jesus. So we saw how um, uh, we, we are in the last few moments, okay, last few days of the Lord Jesus being crucified. And uh, Jesus demonstrates his humility uh, by washing the feet of his disciples. He encourages them to um, uh, care for one another, love one another, be humble. And uh, also we saw his prayers. He prays for himself and he asks the father to glorify him. He prays for the disciples and he uh, wants them to be together wants them in other words to love one another and maintain that spirit of unity and we also saw that uh, um, for the believers to come which would be you and i also he says that that we may be one so that uh, the world will believe in him so these are the prayers that jesus prayed and uh, we will continue from there we will see the days now so we saw the last supper we saw how um Jesus was prepared, you know, Jesus was prepared through prayer, uh, also through his body was prepared by that uh, alabaster jar which Mary broke at his feet. So he was being prepared in every way. And we also saw how there was a betrayal, a very, um, a very a painful betrayal because Judas, one of the men that Jesus chose, okay, uh, he... Uh, betrayed him for 30 silver coins and uh, that you know it's unimaginable how uh, something like this could happen so now let's continue with uh, john chapter 18 in john chapter 18 just give me a moment i'll open it up sorry i had some other version open quickly Yeah. So now is where, uh, you know, you would see the events unfolding, you know, the it's like um, when we study the book of Acts, you it, it's like a story, right? Like this happened and then that happened. So uh, from everything that is going on, we can understand how Jesus is being betrayed uh, and the trial of Jesus will also begin soon. So uh, John 18 is more about Jesus being caught. Okay. And then the trial starting off. 19 is about uh, Jesus being tried and Jesus being crucified. Then 20 is about Jesus rising up. Uh, and then both, you know, 20, 21, you will see the 
resurrected Christ interacting uh, in the book of John, particularly it's about his interactions with his disciples because they were the most important people to Jesus. But we also know from um, other uh, scriptures that Jesus did not appear only to the disciples. He also appeared to other people. So that is the progression. So 18, 19, 20, 21. And uh, if you're able to uh, touch on all the four chapters, then we have completed our portions. Yeah. So here in 18, uh, this is um, where we see Jesus going up to a garden. Okay, that garden is the garden of Gethsemane. And uh, we are told that that was the place where Jesus met his disciples very, very often. So he went there to spend time with them. Uh, but Judas, you know, he and he knew, oh, okay, this is the place where Jesus is going to be. What he did was he worked on his plan. Okay, his, uh, um, you could call it like a wicked plan. So he gathered troops um, uh, of uh, like sort of, uh, mm, what do you call them? Uh, detachment troops uh, that were approved by uh, the chief priests. Okay, so there were troops and officers. He gathered them and he knew that if he goes to Gethsemane, he would find Jesus. And he could easily, you know, get rid of Jesus and he will get the money. So he goes there. So Gethsemane uh, is, um, uh, I, I think it, the meaning of Gethsemane is uh, the, the uh, press or something, oil press, or olive press, something like that. So, but we know that, you know, it's, it's more than the uh, symbolic um, uh, by the understanding of the name, right? Because that's a place also where we've seen Jesus really waiting in the presence of God and being crushed in the spirit. So it's um, um, somewhat connecting, okay, the name of the place and what Jesus actually went through. But in the account of John, you don't read about the prayer of Jesus and all. But over here, uh, directly you see that Judas comes, he comes with the troops and um, the troops ask the, uh, you know, some, they ask the question, um, what is it, once again, the question is, um, who, who am I, okay, Jesus asks the question, sorry, whom are you seeking? So they answer and they say, Jesus of Nazareth. So what Jesus does is, he immediately owns up uh, or he uh, confirms to them that I am he. Why did Jesus do that? He wanted, it is possible that Jesus wanted to protect his disciples and he did not want them to get into trouble. And also, uh, I, I told us that Jesus had a good sense of time. He knew which was his hour or his hour of being um, killed. So uh, Jesus, at this point, he's not even trying to um, run away. From what is happening because you know he could have hidden right and maybe that is the reason why judas brought the troops thinking that in the garden what if jesus hides what if the other disciples hide so these troops they also went in with lanterns or lights okay uh, to catch jesus uh, but it was really uh, something surprising for the troops because immediately when they ask okay Jesus of Nazareth, that's the person we are looking for. Without any fear, he says, I am he. And at that time, you know, uh, we read in verse 6 of chapter 18 that they fell, they drew back and fell to the ground. So some writers, they say that um, uh, we know that Jesus is fully man and fully God, right? So his, his glory in some sense, we don't know exactly how there was a display of the, the glory of God. But when he said, I am he, uh, you know, something about the deity of God, you know, would have been revealed to the troops. And no wonder they all fell to the ground. It was as if it was a moment of uh, awe and reverence. So they fell to the ground. Uh, and then once again, he asked them, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, so Jesus is being very, very bold. 
and he says i am he uh therefore if you seek me let these go their way so he is trying to protect his disciples and he is telling the troops to take him and leave the others alone now when all this is going on you know you uh, also understand the different personalities of the disciples so simon peter you know in a moment like this we know that he had a zeal to serve jesus he had a zeal to follow jesus immediately knowing that jesus is in a difficult situation what he does is he takes he takes a sword okay uh, and he uh, uh he charges at one of the people uh, the high priest servant in fact uh, who is part of the troop so when he does that the right ear of that servant is cut off and the servant's name is malchus okay now some people say why is it that jesus's disciples they were carrying swords so it seems that um uh, in those times that could have been um some people who were violent so jesus would go to different places and minister right so for their own protection the disciples also carried a sword that's how peter had a sword with him for self protection but he used it in the wrong way so what did he do he went immediately without even asking jesus in his anger he went and cut the ear of the high priest servant uh, then but jesus got upset with him and told peter put your sword back in the sheath okay and it also shows us that by this time you know we read about the prayer of jesus in matthew 26 every um, gospel if you read every gospel you'll get bits and pieces of the story you know the way it is being narrated so over here we don't see jesus praying but matthew 26 we see that you know jesus is praying at that time his heart uh, is still in turmoil and he asks whether uh, he can escape the death but by now you know when the troops come very clearly verse 11 he says he rebukes peter and he says shall i not drink the cup which my father has given me so it shows that through prayer you know sometimes through prayer sometimes we are not ready to accept god's will but when we have spent time in prayer what happens we are able to consecrate ourselves we are able to consecrate our desires that's what jesus did he consecrated himself unto the lord and um, uh, when he dedicated himself unto the lord he was willing to give in to the uh, will of god for his life which was the cross so he's so ready he says shall i not drink the cup which my father has given me so uh, at this point you know jesus goes ahead and um, uh, we know we we read um, elsewhere that he actually heals the ear of this servant called as malchus okay? so here john he doesn't try to go into the details of it very quickly like you see uh, his writing he is just giving the highlight so from there jesus was taken to a high priest so from the garden they captured him they took him to the high priest by the name of annas okay annas had a son in law by the name of uh, kephas okay kephas was the um, high priest that year and uh, so from annas jesus actually was transferred to caiphas and then we will see that he was transferred to pilot okay so that is the transition that takes place and then finally you know pilot is the one who goes ahead and gives an approval for the crucifixion of jesus so now all this is unfolding jesus was captured he was taken to high priest annas annas sends him to caiphas and you could say that the disciples are kind of observing okay, all that is going on and right now what happens is um you remember when peter uh, jesus wanted to wash peter's feet and peter was so zealous about serving the lord you know jesus told him i know i already know about your weakness peter and that you are going to deny me three times so peter most likely he was observing you know the things that were going on and along with john so here uh, john doesn't give his 
identity openly but he uses things like another disciple or uh, the disciple whom jesus loved so we can understand that john was also with peter so peter followed jesus along with john and we are told that they were in the uh, uh they were like in the high priest you know that that area that zone that courtyard uh it is likely that uh, you know john had some connections with the high priest you know in some way otherwise they would not have had access to uh, this area okay so here when uh, peter and john are observing what is going on you know we see that peter you know, one girl looks at peter and she makes a statement she is a servant girl okay in the um, high priests um uh, sort of you know that that uh, his his uh, courtyard so this girl she says you are not also one of this man's disciples are you so maybe maybe when she the way she asked the question uh, are you not also one of this man's disciples maybe she recognized john as one of the disciples and she's also asking peter are you not one of the disciples but you see peter got so scared after seeing jesus captured right and it was that he was observing all the things that were going on with jesus and it was um maybe he didn't expect their leader to become so helpless right uh just think about it you know jesus twice in the garden of gethsemane he could have escaped and that was the attitude peter had he thought oh we are going to get out of this that's why he took his sword and he <coughs> attacked but jesus gave himself in to the trial and maybe peter was disappointed peter was afraid you know peter was uh worried looking at the future if this is what is going to happen to the leader what will happen to us jesus gave himself to the authorities now let me you know escape we don't know whether consciously he did it you know sometimes uh, subconsciously without even thinking we try to escape a place that uh, may be stressful for us so when the servant girl asked the question mm, see it's it's like it's dangerous for john as well as for peter isn't it because what she is saying is are you not also one of the disciples so she knows that john is a disciple peter also is a disciple but you know what peter is so scared he says no i'm not so there he denies jesus again there was a spot where um the servants and the officers you know they made a uh, fire of coals and they were warming themselves so we are told that peter also stood with them why did peter stand with them you know it could also be that he wanted to um, escape people started recognizing him as a disciple he didn't want that so he wanted to escape into a group or a crowd so that's why he was standing there and over there um, uh, again you know you you would notice that somebody asks a question to him and says are you also not one of the disciples and peter says no i am not okay and third uh, again one of the servants of the high priest asked the same question did i not see you in the garden with him and again you know peter denies it so uh, jesus had told him that before the rooster crows or before it is morning peter you are going to deny me three times and he actually did that now while this is going on you know what he observes is that uh, jesus is being taken to the high priest and over there you know uh, they they ask they start questioning him so jesus gives an answer there and says look uh, why are you asking me all these questions have i not spoken openly in the temple uh, and where the jews always meet uh, i've not said anything in secret but you know he basically says that i've shared everything in public why are you questioning me once again okay on the same things that i have already boldly proclaimed 
so when he says this you know he know he uh, is beaten this is the beginning of the physical torture or you know the the beatings and the physical pain of jesus so when he's standing before the high priest you know one of the officers who stood next to jesus and he gave this answer right and said look i've already spoken in public why are you asking me again at that time the officer with this palm he hits him okay and says do you answer the high priest like that do you remember even paul uh, when paul says oh i have had a good conscience before god and men he stands before the high priest ananias somebody comes and strikes him on his mouth okay so very similar experience that paul had and also jesus is having now so somebody actually strikes him so you can imagine the humility the uh, humiliation that jesus is going through for speaking the truth basically he is saying that he hasn't done anything wrong for that he is being beaten so when he is beaten you know again he says look if i have spoken evil bear witness of the evil or let there be evidence if i have done something wrong but if i have done something well you know why is it that you are hitting me so jesus also is asking for justice and uh, uh, you know at this time when this was going on uh, maybe you know peter was observing oh first of all my master is taken uh, peter and john both of them my master is taken and look at the way they are treating him somebody just hit him okay with the palm so all this would have made peter really scared and that's the reason when people asked him oh you also must be one of his disciples he conveniently washed his hands off and said oh no no i i don't know i i'm not i'm not one of his disciples so such is the uh, such are the events of the trial of jesus so from here you know, jesus is then uh, led so he was with anas the high priest now he is being led to the uh, area where the high priest caiphas you know uh, looks into matters so that's called as the praetorium so the praetorium of caiphas is where he is being taken now and it is early morning okay so jesus goes there um, and um, mm, uh, you know now finally you know the decision is is made for jesus to be jesus to be tried by pilate okay so pilate comes into the picture here oh sorry um just a little bit of a, a confusion here I, i clarify so he's taken from caiphas to the praetorium of pilate okay he's taken to the praetorium of pilate and over here again you know the way john writes is it's not going to be very long um from anas to caiphas where you know the striking uh, happens and then coming to the praetorium of pilate over here you know pilate tries to interrogate the matter and uh, so he first comes and he asks um the people uh, you know whether like what is the what is the matter what is the accusation against this man mm, then uh, he asks them you know if if he is not an evil doer why is it that you have uh, you have delivered this man up to me so when he tries to ask the people the question he does not get a straight forward answer from them okay so uh, he is a little concerned uh he tries to convince them and tells them why don't you take him and you only judge him but they are not willing okay so the people are not willing and they want basically what they had in mind is that pilot if pilot condemns this man he would die and uh, that would be the best end to uh, this leader called as jesus so pilot is trying his best to figure out you know, what exactly did this man do that is unlawful Uh, and uh, you know uh, anyway so pilot looks into the matter so the jews you know they they um, they are trying to um, sort of justify 
themselves that what the the reason why jesus is there is because he has done something unlawful so the jews tell him it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death that the saying of jesus might be fulfilled which he spoke signifying by what death he would die so they are trying to prove that he is unjust but at the same time you know they do not want to uh, be responsible for the death of jesus so it's it's a little um you know like they are they want someone else to do the the sin but they will instigate it so they are in that position so they are unwilling to back off uh, and uh, they they also know that they are not able to pinpoint something about jesus but now the ball is in pilate's court so you know finally pilate is the one who has to uh, decide so he goes and ask jesus a straightforward question okay are you the king of the jews and you know what jesus replies he says mm, uh, are you speaking for yourself about this or did others tell you this concerning me okay so jesus also is pointing out in a way to say that actually he is the king of the jews so how did you find out you know uh, did you already know or did other people tell you so when pilot asks the question that's the way jesus responds mm. then uh, you know pilot is like he's not very clear so again he asks him what have you done please tell me so jesus answers back and he says look my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world my servants would fight so that i should not be delivered to the jews but now my kingdom is not from here so jesus gives him the spiritual perspective because the question he asked was are you the king of the jews so he's saying yes i am a king but i am not the kind of king that you think i am i have a different kingdom okay uh, and basically he's trying to show him that my kingdom is the heavenly kingdom it is a spiritual kingdom then again you know pilate is trying to clarify he says oh okay then uh, are you a king you know give a straight forward answer then jesus says yes you know you said rightly i am a king for this i was born and for this cause i have come into the world that i should bear witness to the truth everyone who is of the truth hears my voice so then you know, pilate is just trying to understand okay he is now confessing that he is a king but what is this truth he is saying i have come to bear witness of the truth what is this truth maybe in his interrogation and questioning of jesus though the answers were not straight forward he had a sense that the way the jews are blaming jesus you know there is really nothing against jesus to be proved okay so without having all the answers and you know when we study a little more about pilot we understand that uh, you know being a person uh, in authority roman authority uh, he was quite a brutal man he was not at all that sensitive when you know somebody who would spare uh, a person's life but in the case of jesus he was not able to find fault the questions he asked jesus answered and yet you know pilate is not able to uh, see that there is something worth killing jesus for so that is the place where we are at right now what pilate does is you know uh, pilate decides that you know somehow let me give an opportunity for this jesus to um be set free so he comes up with an idea because the jews are very um very fixed on their decision about jesus they are not willing to back off so pilot proposes this he says listen we have a custom okay during passover and that is to release someone so i have with me a prisoner 
who uh, he's a robber. His name is Barabbas. And uh, also now we have this Jesus and the accusation against him is that he is the king of the Jews. Right. So you take a pick. If you want me to release one of these people. OK, I, I could release. And in his heart, you know, Pilate was actually thinking that the people will choose Jesus and thereby Jesus will go free. And you know, even before the, the um, choice happens by the people, we read in, uh, I'm in the next chapter now, John chapter 19, we see that Pilate takes Jesus and he scourges him. Okay, so scourging is, it's a beating. Um, we saw earlier that with the palm, you know, he was hit in front of the high priest. Now he is being beaten with whips and in scourging, these whips used to have very, very sharp metal ends or they used to have these sharp bone uh, ends. Okay, so uh, Pilate gets Jesus beaten very badly. Mm, and, you know, when whenever one would be scorched, you, you read the description of it, it was really a very painful and a very, very horrible experience because it seems those those um, metal ends, they once they whip you with it, it will go into your flesh, even up to the bone and just rip off. It's almost like removing the flesh from off the bones. You know, it, it was that excruciating, um, uh, it, you know, it was painful. It was uh, it was just a horrible way to be uh, punished. But Pilate scourges Jesus. And one of the reasons why, you know, people say that he did that because he was now ready to release either Jesus of Nazareth or King of the Jews, which is the accusation against Jesus, or he was ready to release Barabbas. Okay. But what he probably thought was this man, Jesus, he seems innocent. If I get him beaten, okay, when he is brought out, uh, he might look very, you know, like, like, um, mm, ill-treated, very, uh, you know, people have pity for the appearance of Jesus. So maybe Pilate thought like that. And so when I present Jesus in this way, the people might say, oh, why, why should we choose Barabbas? He's a robber. You know, how about we release Jesus and let Jesus go? So maybe with that mindset, Pilate also got Jesus beaten very badly. And while he uh, uh, was, you know, being beaten and all of that, we also read that the soldiers, they put a twisted crown of thorns on the head of Jesus. So basically, all this was a, a way of treating the accused with mockings. Okay. It's, it's like in fun of them. Oh, you are the king of the Jews. Oh, come on. Let, let us put the uh, crown on you. And this crown was the crown of thorns. And we also see that they put on him a purple robe. You know, royalty or kings would wear robes that were colored because colored robes are very expensive in those days. Everybody couldn't wear it. Uh, so only royalty would wear it. But since Jesus confirmed and said, yes, it is as you say. I am the king, but my kingdom is not of this world. So they try to make fun. The soldiers try to make fun of him and they put a purple robe around Jesus. And then, you know, they started making uh, slogans and um, uh, uh, just started shouting out and saying, hail king of the Jews. So all this was a way to humiliate Jesus further. So, you know, for us, we are listening to all this, okay? And uh, uh, I'm sure that day, even the disciples were probably noticing, they were watching the things that were happening to Jesus and uh, don't know what they would have gone through. One is fear for themselves, what will happen to us. But to see their leader going through so much of pain for doing all the right things, See, the accusation against Jesus, if you go back and look at his life and try to unearth, okay, what did he do which is so evil that he has to be beaten like this, that he has to have a 
crown of thorns and it seems in the way that they treated you know uh, somebody who's accused it was really sad they would even spit so here is jesus being completely humiliated in pain in weakness this is all physical but you think about his emotional state you know it's the very same people whom he served whom he blessed you know in amidst whom he did miracles he spoke god's word to these people and we know that he came for the purpose of redeeming mankind which includes these same people these same soldiers you know that annas the high priest caiphas the high, high priest pilate uh, part of uh, the the roman government so what pain jesus would have gone through to see that he was being treated so badly but you know we when we read isaiah we see that he went to uh, uh, you know like a lamb to be slaughtered but he did not even open his mouth because you know god's love there's a there's a very beautiful song right uh, uh, which says that what held jesus on the cross was it the nails you know but it was truly the love that he had for mankind that held him on the cross it was the love that he had for mankind that carried him through you know you see right what terrible torture he's going through and uh, uh, anyone who has made a mistake who is accused and uh, you know truly they've done something they could even be treated like this and you know we might be okay with it but jesus did nothing okay to be treated in this manner but it was his love for us that he actually went through all this and his obedience his commitment to the father the father sent him for the assignment of redemption and jesus you know took that up and so we see you know that painful trial of jesus which is taking place which is unbearable when we go into the details of it when you study the gospels when you study also from isaiah you know you realize that he was treated so badly that you could not even make out you know uh, his image anymore he was a normal strong uh, jewish young man a uh, well built right and there are again accounts if you read historically it says like maybe he was about 511 and quite a muscular person but being treated like this with scourgings you know with thorns what would have happened to his body you imagine but he went through it okay and that's why john you know what did john say i witness whatever i have seen i've heard i know you know i'm sharing with you i have seen all these things so john would have also observed all these things going on with jesus it was painful physically emotionally and of course spiritually because on the cross you know jesus was separated from the father when he took on all the sins of the world uh, just just for some time but it was very painful you know in every sense but jesus was willing to go through it because of his love because of his obedience now the beating up him up badly in that purple robe and the crown and you know you could see blood and spit then sweat all that over jesus pilot brings out and he says okay now look this is jesus this is barabbas okay now you decide whom do you want to release because there is a uh, there is a provision like that we can i can release somebody to you so the whole time pilot was thinking this man is innocent hopefully he will be released but you know the crowd the crowd went mad and they started saying that they want barabbas to be released and they said crucify him crucify him for jesus okay so you know pilate was in a in a place where he couldn't do anything because the crowd was against the high priest the chief priests were against the officers and they all cried out together crucify him so finally pilate also said okay this you have decided you do one thing you take him and you crucify him because 
I really do not find anything wrong with this person. Now, when we read the other Gospels, we also know that Pilate's wife had a dream and she sent him a message and told him, please don't have anything to do with this man's execution. So he washed his hands off. You know, Pilate washed his hands off because he knew that he would have innocent blood on him and his coming generations. So now uh, these people, they kind of go ahead and they, you know, uh, proceed with the crucifixion of Jesus. So they kind of um, appeal to Pilate and they say, look, you know, this man, the Jews, you know, they had uh, the issue with Jesus because he called himself the son of God. And for the Jews, that was a very blasphemous thing, right? We've seen that. And they asked for Jesus to explain uh, at, at many points. So you know, they bring that up to Pilate and they say, look, this man claims to be equal to God. Uh, but, you know, um, mm, Pilate, he is, he's a little more confused. So he just kind of, you know, goes, at, goes ahead and interrogates Jesus once again. So he asks him, you know, where are you from? Are you not speaking to me? So basically he's trying to uh, talk to Jesus such that if Jesus stands up for himself, you know, maybe Pilate stands a chance to rescue Jesus. So he goes and again he asks him, where are you from? You know, why are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you and the power to release you? And at that point, you know, Jesus says that you, know, you don't have any power which has not been given to you. Okay, unless it comes from above, you have no power over me. So Jesus also is very clear that this moment has come because God has, um, uh, you know, this is the moment for Jesus to die on the cross. So it's it's not because, you know, it's Pilate's authority and uh, Jesus was not scared of anybody, even of Pilate. So basically he's saying that this moment has come because the father has uh, approved of this moment. So he makes it very, very clear. So Pilate, he tries to release him. Um, mm, uh, but the people are again against Pilate and uh, you know they they uh, try to um, bring fear into his heart and they say things like if you don't crucify this man you know uh, and also he's saying that he's the king the king of the Jews how can he say the, uh, that he's the king when Caesar is the leader so if you let this man go you're not Caesar's friend Right? So as a Roman, obviously Pilate would have wanted the favor of the people and to be known as Caesar's friend. So finally, you know, um, they bring uh, Jesus out and then they present Jesus to be crucified. And they, the accusation against him is that he is the king of the Jews. Okay, And, and the people are so ready to crucify him. So they go ahead. Jesus is taken to a place known as the place of skull, which we know in Hebrew is called as Golgotha. And over there, he was crucified. He was crucified with two others on both sides. And these two others were, um, you know, people who had uh, done some crimes. But Jesus, even though he was innocent, you know, he was crucified, okay, in the center. And the accusation, you generally, whatever was the reason for crucifying the person, you know, that would be written on the cross. So here, the accusation against Jesus was put up, which is mentioned as Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, or he claimed to be the king of the Jews. The Jews did not like that also. They wanted Pilate to put out there that he called himself the king of the Jews. But, you know, Pilate was least bothered. He was least interested because there was really nothing wrong with Jesus. So they left the name tag like that as Jesus of Nazareth, 
the king of the jews and also pilot asked for this to be translated into other languages such as greek and latin so you know we see here even in the way the things unfolded in the life of jesus and in the crucifixion of jesus you know um uh, we are seeing that for every language you know, every a person in the world this jesus has died for us jesus of nazareth and he indeed is our king and as jesus was hanging there on the cross we read a couple of other things as well the people around him the soldiers around him they wanted to um uh, share his garments okay he, they wanted four parts of it and they wanted to uh, like sort of divide it among themselves okay uh the tunic or the garment which jesus had there was already you know there was a prophecy about it um in scripture we won't look at you know the the many prophecies you know which we have about uh the life of jesus and the fulfillment of all these events that took place in jesus's life but you know i i'm sure you you would um uh recall with me that there is a passage which says they divided my garments among them and for my clothing they cast lots so even in what was unfolding uh, near the cross you know, we observe that prophecy was being fulfilled and at that time you know, jesus looked at uh, a disciple again here it's not mentioned right which disciple john covers it up again and says the disciple whom jesus loved so the reference is actually to himself uh, and jesus from the cross he looks at mary his mother and uh, you know he uh, sort of entrusts her to john you no know, he tells john okay behold your mother and to uh, mary behold your son so he makes sure you look at the beautiful son that he was you know he could have just thought of uh, himself as the son of god i have fulfilled the responsibility which god gave me i have fulfilled the ministry which god gave me why should i take care of my parents but you see here that jesus was even mindful of his earthly responsibilities even while he was on the cross right so he sort of entrusts his mother to the disciple john and he later on you know the the uh, uh, life that he has he gives it up and we hear his final cry where he says it is finished okay so what was finished he finished the work that the father gave him to be crucified for the redemption of mankind and just before he was crucified we also see that he asked for a drink okay so this was um sour wine so somebody filled a sponge with sour wine and then uh, sort of dipped it and then made his lips wet you know sometimes like when people are dying uh when they're thirsty people wet their lips they wet their mouth so you know someone did that for jesus just before he gave up his life and then jesus died on that cross and he confirmed that his work was finished and just two more things i'll quickly share and then we can go for a break uh you know we observe that uh, two more prophecies about the lord jesus uh, and the events when he is on the cross you know, those were fulfilled that is the authority sent soldiers to break the bones of the uh, men who were crucified and the reason they would do that is if you break the bones of the uh, people who are hanging on the cross they would die faster and a more painful death but when they came to jesus they noticed that he had already died okay so they did not break his bones all right and scriptures tell us that none of his bones were broken so that prophecy was also fulfilled while jesus hung on the cross um and you know they to check whether jesus had died or not they also took um you know something like a sword and they pierced his side and we read that water and blood came out so there is another prophetic uh, scripture which says that 
they shall look on him whom they pierced so every piece of the prophecy about the messiah his life and what he would do was fulfilled and once jesus was um Uh, killed in this way we read that joseph of arimathea he is likely one of the disciples of jesus but he was rich obviously if he has connections with pilot he is a rich man he and also we see the name of nicodemus here i remember one of you asked the question did nicodemus become a believer and i told you not sure but you see in this incident you know nicodemus he goes along with joseph and both of them help with the uh, embalming of the body of jesus you see you imagine for a disciple it must have been so painful because you're hardly seeing the person you're hardly seeing the body there it's all beaten it's broken but they're taking you know the myrrh and the aloe and the things that they used to take to uh, prepare the body before putting them putting it in the tomb you know they are preparing it right uh, and uh, you know they carried the body of jesus and they laid it in a garden and this garden tomb it was uh, of joseph it was not used earlier but he just wanted to honor jesus and that place was the place which was chosen for the body of jesus now usually when people used to die on the cross um, the um, soldiers would just let them be there okay and the bodies would be eaten by birds they would be eaten by animals um uh, but because it was very you know the passover it was that season of the passover uh, and it was the day of preparation they did not want bodies to be seen you know in an untidy manner and that's the reason they were in a big hurry to go and break the bones check whether the crucified people had died already or not and if they had not died you know they would have made sure that the uh, bo- person died and they would have removed the bodies from golgotha okay so uh, that is the um, uh, sequence of events leading to the death of jesus so let's go for a break in 10 minutes we'll come back it is 9:53 let's start at 10:03 and uh, you know i'll cover uh, about um, the resurrection uh, of jesus and uh, you know some of some of the interactions that he had with his disciples okay so uh, i hope it's okay class kind of going little fast yeah okay all right yes great so let's go for a break then and we'll be back in 10 minutes thank you